بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹل مین ونس اگین ویلکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر افتخار اینڈ آئی ول کنٹینیو دا ڈسکشن اباؤٹ دا کوانٹیٹیو ٹیکنیکس وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ لاٹ اباؤٹ دا ریگریشن ریگریشن اینڈ ریگریشن اینڈ آئی تھنک یو آر ناؤ سک آف دس ورڈ سو دیٹ ٹو چینج یور ٹیسٹ آئی ہیو ڈیسائڈیڈ ٹو سوئچ فرام دا ریگریشن ٹاپک فار سم ٹائم so what we will be doing here we will be doing some of other uh, we will be covering some of other topics and then after two or three lecture we will be come we will come back towards the regression because we can't go away from the regression because we have still covered a very basic uh, basic terminology and basic analysis of the regression and we have to go for the multivariate analysis that is mostly used in most of the regression analysis because the dependent variable is not only uh, uh, not only depends on the in, uh, one de independent variable but it depends on a lot of independent variable so before going far to the, the lecture as usual i would like to give you the summary of the previous lecture in the previous lecture you learned very interesting things the first was gauss mark and gauss markov theorem this is a very simple theorem and it says that if the all the assumption of the classical linear regression model are fulfilled then the estimator that the ols estimator are below now what is the below b stands for the best this means that these estimator has the minimum variance among the competitors other competitors are they are also non uh, they are also linear the in below the first is b stand for best uh, best l stand for the linear definitely we will be comparing only the linear estimates and unbiased unbiased means that if we take the expected value of this beta 2 hat or any parameter it should be equal to the true parameter after this we study the coefficient of determination coefficient of determination is a measure to tell you that how uh, much your uh, model is uh, best fit and it uh, tells about the you can say the reliability of your model the uh, it's the uh, we denoted it by the r square small r square because we are talking about the linear uh, bivariate regression model and in bivariate regression model we uh, denote major uh, coefficient of determination by small x square so it simply t uh, tells us that what is the goodness of our fit it ranges between 0 and 1 and the more it goes to 1 we become more and more happy that our model is becoming more has become more and more reliable but as its value converges towards 0 it puts question mark on the efficiency of the our model or you can say the goodness of our model the last thing that was a very practical and very important and as i will be i will be fulfilling my promise to tell you the eview software in the next two uh, in the uh, next two uh, lectures not after this but uh, the lecture that will be after the next lecture i will be teaching you the eviews and then you will be able to do it practically monte carlo experiment simply says that how we prove that the expected value of the parameter estimated parameter is equal to the true parameter and we went through this whole uh, uh, process it was a eight or nine step procedure and i am sure you have got the idea so today we will uh, start a new topic that is the uh, before starting the new topic i would like to give you the whole uh, what is the purpose of ultimately of the regression and how we interpret the result although here we will remain very simple but at later stage we will be using more variable and that will be multivariate so what is this first of all if we estimate the model if you look at the slide you can see we have estimated the model and this is the sim simple model this is the simplest model that the quantity demanded of a commodity depends on its price and it has a negative relationship with the price so what this means if you see here similarly this is beta 1 hat and this is this 0.5 is beta 2 hat and we suppose that the coefficient of determination that is the r square it is 0.85 
So first of all, I would like to have a sum look at this value. This is very plausible value because it shows that out of the 100% variation in our quantity demand, 85% variation is explained by the our p var uh, variable. It means the p alone has a significant and potential effect, a uh, potential power to uh, to explain the variation in quantity demand. And in reality, it is true that the price is a major and significant determination of the uh, uh, the uh, variation in the quantity demanded. Now, if I come to uh, here that what is the beta 2 hat we are interested in most of the time in the slope coefficient. This is the beta 2 hat. What this tells? It tells that it, it, because it is a simple model, we will interpret it this in this way that if there is one rupee, suppose one rupee increase in the price, there will be decrease in uh, quantity on average equal to 0 0.5. It means if there are unit, the half unit will it decrease. Again, I would like to give that if the price of a commodity increases uh, by one unit, there will be decrease in the quantity demanded by 0 0.5. That means the half uh, half of the unit, it will decrease. If you look at the these, I am not going to explain the beta 1 hat because most of the time, the uh, the interpretation of beta 1 hat is meaningless. M uh, but slope coefficients are all the time they have meanings because they are linking one variable with the other and each slope coefficient is attached with the variable. And now uh, if you see what is the variation of beta 1 hat, you can say these all values are given in all the statistical package. For example, if you have the data of quantity demand, you have the data of price, and you run the regression, all these values will be present in your output, and we will see in the eViews output that these values are present there. So what is the variance of beta 1 hat? It is a big value of the beta, uh, the uh, standard error. It means we could not, our model could not precisely measure the, uh, 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 we could not precisely measure the beta 1 hat. And if we see the standard error, that is the only square, positive square root of this, it is 2, it is still enough high, and we can say that we, uh, our uh, estimation of our beta 1 hat may, be, uh, uh, may face some of the problem, but this is not a rule of thumb. In some cases, the higher uh, standard error may be not showing that it is a big higher, it is a some relative term. So what is this? variance of beta 2 hat and we are interested in the standard error that is nothing but this is the positive square root of the variance of beta 2 hat. So what this means here we can see that this is a very small st standard error that enables us that tells us that the we have estimated our beta 2 hat that is our slope coefficient the coefficient that is attached with the price we have measured it precisely and it has a reliability. So this was the just a very, very simple interpretation of the result. Our purpose is not to just mechanism, uh, to show you the mechanism, each and only on with one click, you can do all this if you have the uh, data required on your variable, but the ultimate objective of the researcher is to interpret the result because the your statistical package are unable to interpret the result. They will just give you the numerical values and these are the you people who have to interpret. Every person will be uh, interpreting the results according to the theory and uh, the uh, according to the theory or the hypothesis or the statement. So here we will just uh, uh, leave this regression analysis for two or three lectures and then we'll, we will return back to this multiple regression analysis. In the meanwhile, you will be getting some tips about the e-views. So what is the topic? If you remember, I would draw your attention to the first lecture. If you remember, while going through the how econo uh, this how quantitative techniques work, there was one portion after the estimation that we test the hypothesis, T hypothesis testing. So what this means, 
although we have taken the result result are on our table and on the screen but we have to check that whether these are significant or these are insignificant we will be talking in one or two lecture most of the time significant and insignificant so we will be testing it through a mechanism if it is a, it passes the test we will say it is significant and if it is unable to go through the test we will say that our although our estimator is uh, according to the theory but its effect is insignificant or ignorable effect so estimation and hypothesis testing these are the two major branches of the classical statistics two things two major branches are that these are if you look at this what is the first is the estimation this is the and the other is the hypothesis testing and these are two major branches of the classical statistics the theory of estimations uh, up till now jo ab tak humne kiya hai it has two parts we just confined ourselves up to point estimation every time we estimated our parameter we came up only with one value there was no range of value but the other is today that we will be discussing that is the interval estimation what is the difference between the point and the interval estimation point estimator if you look at this line point estimator gives only one value of the parameter why we, it is good that it gives only one value of the parameter but if you remember that in repeated sampling the values of the parameter changes so it means it is not only one way, uh, value of the parameter or the estimator we will be estimating every person who will be doing sample he will come up with a new value of the parameter uh, estimates that is the beta 1 hat or the beta 2 hat so what we can, it means there will be we want some now range rather than one value because there is on, not only one value it that it is a uh, very near to beta that is the true value so we want some range and we could if we could tell that this will fall into this range then we, we can say something with more confidence for example if you expect that your colleague will come exactly at 9 and you uh, you want to be more confident you make a, 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 a interval that 15 minute before from he will come between 8:45 to 9:15 so this is now a range of variable if he comes many times he will be falling in this range it we will be doing that how we can uh, in a construct the confidence interval across sample parameter as i explained the parameters value changes because every person with come with the new value of the parameter however the mean value this is interesting and thanks god that the mean value of the estimated pa parameter is equal to the true parameter in indirectly i am talking about the unbiasedness of the parameter because the expected value of the parameter is always equal to the true parameter if the assumptions are fulfilled relying on the one point estimate we may construct an interval around the point estimator i will be just showing you the picture and i will be explaining the interval may within two or three standard errors this is that there will be a mean for example this is the mean i say mu and we will be constructing on both side of this the that constructing uh, this will be plus minus we will be uh, construct up to one standard error we can up to uh, two standard error or three standard error so we will be talking about that how much we should take the, this uh, make this interval by taking by adding one standard uh, adding or subtracting one standard error to mean two standard error or three we will be just coming after a short while towards this the interval has say 95% probability of including the true parameter so the which we will make the interval 
we will make the construct the interval you should just suppose here that the interval is here you made the interval for example i will go back to your uh, example that you are waiting for your colleague and you have made the interval that he will be coming between 8:45 to 9:15 this is 30 minute uh, interval you uh, you have made so uh, but his this, uh, his uh, time was 9 so you made this interval so what this is 95% probability of including the true parameter value it means you are 95% confident that in this time your colleague will come confidence interval we are going to now construct or you can say we are going into the mechanics of the confidence interval it is pure statistical sense and it is necessary because at the end of our estimation we have to see the reliability and the significance of the our parameter that can be done only this way two positive well numbers if you see this is the and i think now you can easily recognize this this is the this is the you can say the standard deviation and this is the level of significance alpha how we select the alpha this is totally at arbitrary and we will be not talking about this we will taking just general assumption that most of the time we take 5% 10% and 1% level of con uh, significance the later lying the value of the alpha is look at here it ranges between 0 and this is the value of alpha it ranges between 0 to 1 zero means no confidence and one mean 100% confident so most of the time we will be constructing our uh, confidence interval on the basis of 95% probability that confident such that kis tarah hum isko jo hai wo banate hain such that the probability that the random interval this is interesting that why we have said this random interval because the interval will keep on changing because the values of the beta 2 in will change in the repeated sampling so what we say at one side there is beta 2 minus this standard error go to the previous slide look at this i wrote here plus minus now i have replaced this by beta 2 this is beta 2 hat minus alpha and the other is bound is beta 2 hat plus this is the you can say this standard error this is the standard deviation also what how to interpret this that the probability that the random interval interval aapne ab bana liya contains the true beta is 1 minus alpha the probability that the random interval contains the true beta is 1 minus alpha alpha is the significance level for example if i said alpha is equal to 5 definitely 0.5 0.05 5% or other I, i can say 5% 1 minus alpha is 95% so we will be making this uh, alpha and 1 minus alpha and we will be making the probability of 95% confidence and we will be showing all the alpha and 1 minus alpha i will be talking about the, that it is a norm to express these into percentage so come here if you look at this now this is the interval this is the probability and this is the interval that the probability that this is true beta the probability of this interval that it will include true beta is 1 minus alpha that is the 95% so such an interval if you look at this if it exists it is called the confidence interval i would like to have repeat this one once again what the this probability shows this is probability about the construction of this uh, confidence interval it cannot say we can't say that we are 95% confident that the value of beta 2 uh, beta 2 true parameter fall into this this is not true what we are saying we are say, going in the other way that probability of a uh, probability of this interval is 95% that it will include the value of the beta 2 that is the true parameter if this interval exist 
it is called the confidence interval and 1 minus alpha is known as the confidence coefficient it is known as the confidence of coefficient that how much you are confident so here 1 minus alpha is 95 percent so we will say that this is 95 percent confidence interval for the our true parameter and as you know this is alpha it is the it is known as the level of significance two things level of significance is totally arbitrary but as I say there is arbitrariness but there are some standard norms these are standard norms that, that we can set alpha is equal to 1% and immediately 1 minus alpha will become 99% so if you want to be more confident you will have to your alpha or uh, uh, alpha you should set at uh, 1% the other norm is 5%, the next is 8, uh, 10%. So we are using, and most of the time, these are the norms that we are using that set alpha is equal to rather 1% or 5% or 10%. And immediately alpha uh, 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 plus 1 minus alpha is equal to 100. So if alpha is equal to 5%, 1 minus alpha is definitely equal to 95%. So what is this? This is the uh, confidence interval and the 1 minus alpha is confidence coefficient that how you are much are confident and the range of alpha is def, uh, you know that it ranges between 0 and 1. 0 means 0 percent and 1 means uh, 100 uh, percent and alpha is known as the level of significance. The endpoints. If you look at here, there are two endpoints. One is this endpoint, beta 2 plus this, and this is beta 2 plus this. These are two endpoints. And what are these called? These are called the confidence limits. If you go to your previous example, now these are your confidence limit. And you could, you could immediately guess that the one is the lower bound, the lower limit, and the other is the higher limit or the, you can say, the upper confidence limit. So if you see here, I, here I have bifurcated it from this. This is your lower limit, lower confidence limit. In your previous example, it is 845. Yeah, this is lower confidence limit, and this is upper confidence limit. In practice, as I have uh, stated previously, in practice, alpha and 1 minus alpha are often expressed in percentage form. So uh, uh, right from the beginning, I started from using it as a percent. If alpha is equal to 5 percent, 1 minus alpha is equal to 95 percent. Before going to the further slide, let me explain this in very brief time. What is this? That rather than now this is the uh, interval estimation, rather than sticking on that we want one value of, uh, we estimate one value of the parameter in repeated sampling when the value of the parameter will change, we want a confidence interval. And we can say that we want to see that how much we are confident that our this interval will include the value of the parameter. So this is the formula for this that I explained. Here are some notation. Alpha is the level of significant, uh, significance. It is totally based on your at, uh, arbitrariness. Even you can set it if, uh, equal to 50 percent. But you will have to justify this that what is the reason that why you want so less confidence level because if you will set this 50 your confidence level that is 1 minus alpha that will also become 50. These, this confidence interval has two endpoints. One is the lower limit, lower confidence limit. The other is the upper confidence limit. And most of the time, we express alpha, that is the level of significance, and 1 minus alpha, that is the confidence coefficient. We express these value as percentage look at here it is very small as you know in the beginning i said that graph shows a clear and very quickly convey the message look at this message for example if we just concentrate on this here so this is this is our point estimate for example it is beta 2 is equal to 1 beta 2 hat is equal to 1 so this is our point estimate we want some 
uh, interval that every time the new beta time in repeated sampling will not necessarily be 1, it may be 1.1, 1 .1, 1 uh, 0.9, whatsoever the position is. So what we say, we make a confidence inter interval. So same confidence interval is, and if you look at this from here to here, and if I write here A to B, this is the confidence interval. So this is the confi and this is the middle of this confidence in interval and this is the upper confidence limit and this is the lower confidence limit and I am sure you will be quickly writing here that in the previous example when you were waiting for your colleague it was 8.45 minutes and it was 19.50. These are supposed values. You can enlarge your uh, class interval. You can say no, you, this is 8 to 10. You, it is up to you that how much you want more uh, the confidence level. Aspects of some of the aspect that needs to be remembered about the interval estimation. Confidence interval does not say. Its statement is very necessary and I should again repeat and you should now concentrate that the confidence in interval that we have built in the previous slides does not say that the probability of true parameter beta 2 lying between the given limit is 1 minus alpha. We are not making the, uh, the uh, we are not making the probability of beta 2 but we are making the probabilities of our class interval. So what this means if beta true although an unknown is assumed to be some fixed number. Look at this why we cannot say the previous things. It is a fixed number, either it lies in interval or it does not. It is, if it lies, it is 100%. If it is outside the interval, it is 0%. What state is that? Uh, then, phir hamara jo hai, wo confidence interval kya hai? What this says, look at the uh, blue, uh, 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 blue context that the probability, this I am going to underline, that the probability of constructing an interval that contains beta 2 is 1 minus alpha, 1 minus alpha. The probability about is the confidence interval, not the beta 2. So this is the situation. You should not say, go to the first line, you should not say that the probability of beta 2 lying between these two limits is 1 minus alpha. Because the, the parameter that is the population parameter although it is unknown but it has a fixed value and if it has a fixed value either it can lie in the interval so it is 100% and it is if it is outside the uh, uh, interval then it is 0%. So what we say as we do not know this what we say that we are uh, the probability of constructing an interval that contains that interval when contains you are 95 percent about your confidence interval that it will include the value of the beta 2. The interval is a random interval. Random to mean it keeps on changing and I think I have explained it in detail so I it will be only just a repetition so I would like to avoid this. It will vary from sample to sample be, uh, to the next because it is based on beta 2 hat and in all the repeated sampling your value of beta estimated uh, parameters will change. The interval is random till the value of parameter is unknown. You see what the random rata jab tak aapko iski value nahi milti. While it is estimated the probability is either 0 or 1. Jab tak aapko pata nahi chalta ki iski value kya hai when you find the value now you can immediately say that whether it is in the interval or not it means either in interval includes this value or interval may not include this value now how to construct the confidence interval uh, we have now seen that rather than sticking on point estimation nowadays are in this lecture we are talking about the interval estimation that you are setting the bounds that your beta the value of your you are setting the interval the, and you are confident 95 percent that this interval will include the value of your true parameter. Under the normality assumption the error term that we assume that the under the normality assumption of the error term 
OLS estimators are also normally distributed. So what is this? If this is the Z, Z is the standard normal dis uh, variable. So Z is equal to the beta 2 hat. If you look at here, it is the estimator that you will estimate from your regression. This is beta 2 and this is parameter, this is unknown. And this is divided by the standard error of beta 2 hat and it is estimated standard error that we have just shown in the previous slides that this is the value of this in the first slide when I interpreted the result I showed that what is the standard error. So if we want the standard normal distribution so z will be equal to the estimator minus the parameter divided by the standard error of the estimator. So if they look at this, this is the standard deviation of the error term. So if it is, uh, is known, the important property of normal distributed variable with mu, mean and sigma square, that is the variance of the error term, is that under the area of the normal curve. So what this means, we are supposing some of the thing. We say that if the we know the standard deviation of the uh, error of the variance, uh, uh, error of the population, then we can say and we will be simply seeing that how much area is under the normal curve. So I think you are well aware of the normal curve. This is the normal distribution. So now I would like to give you say this at in the here in the middle it is the mu that is the mean that is the population mean now I want to show that how much area under the curve is the total area under the curve is I think you know that it is hundred percent we show it in percentages and if it is normally distributed you can say on the right and left of this is divided into equal to the uh, right of the mean as well as to the left so it means to the right of the mean the area is 50 percent under the curve and to the left the area is also 50 percent so we are interested that uh, what is the situation if we say that mu plus minus this this is the sigma. What we are he doing here, we are making the confidence interval. Look at this uh, and the, here our, we are making the confidence uh, uh, interval around the mu that is the population mean. So what is this here if I want to I separate plus minus, I make the lower limit and the higher limit, you will come to know that it is mu minus sigma and the other limit is mu plus sigma. So if this is the limit, in this situation, if we take only the one standard deviation or one standard error, the area under the curve it covers is equal to 68%. Out of 100%, the values of the, this mean will vary uh, uh, up to one standard if you make the confidence interval once. Uh, uh, one up to the one standard error then it can cover the 68 percent values of the your true parameter for example if I say I suppose that is this is one standard error and this is also on the other one standard error so if I take this here from here to I connect this with this one and I also connect this with this one this area is now if I say that this area is now 68 percent and if I take two if I make such kind of thing that I change this that mu minus two uh, this sigma and mu plus two sigma so it means I am going up to now here So all this is, now this is mu plus 2 sigma and all this is mu minus 2 sigma. So now this area from here to here, this is under the normal curve and I, we will say that it covers the 95%. It covers the 
95% below the normal curve. And if I go further one step, that is, it is, if I go one step further and I take the three standard error, I enlarge my confidence interval and what this is, that if mu minus this is the lower bound, lower confidence limit and the other is mu plus 3 sigma. So this is 2 sigma, I suppose this is the 3 sigma. This is mu plus 3 sigma and at here is mu plus minus 3 sigma. This is mu. Mu minus 3 sigma. So if we see the area under this, that is the under the normal curve is from here to here, now this is 99.7%. So what this means, now you should remember these things that up to one standard error on both sides, the area under the normal curve is 68%. Up to two standard error on both sides, the area under the curve is this is 95% and up to three uh, standard error, mu plus three standard error and mu minus th uh, three standard er error, the area it cover is 99.7%. It means up to three, what this means? That if we make this uh, interval, 99.7 of the observation uh, will be falling in this area. Uh, area. So now we have to make some of the, uh, you can say that you, uh, we have to construct the uh, confidence interval and I will be making two confidence interval. One that is the beta 2 hat and the other is for the sigma square. The reason between making two different uh, confidence interval is that, that the beta 2 is hat, we suppose that it follows the T distribution and and the sigma is, that is the variance is that it follows the chi-square distribution. So if you look at here, what is the T value? So we will be starting from this one, this, that is the T value is equal to beta 2 hat minus beta 2 and it uh, divided by the standard error. So remain with me. So what is this, how we start? We write here, that was our T previously t is equal to beta 2 hat minus true beta and it is divided by standard error of beta 2 hat. Now we start the, I start the confidence interval. This is the probability minus t alpha by 2. This is two tailed. If you look at here, very small, look at here if alpha is 5%, T alpha by 2 is here 2.5% on this side and T alpha by 2 is also on this side, that is also 2.5. 2.5 plus 2.5 is 5%. I will be talking about these are the critical re, uh, re, uh, values. So T mi uh, minus T alpha by 2 is less than equal to T, this T, we will replace this value later and this is less than equal to T alpha by 2 and it is equal to 1 minus alpha, that is the confidence level. So now replace T is equal to this term, all this term. So what will be? The probability will become minus T alpha by 2 less than equal to beta 2 hat minus beta divided by standard error of beta 2 hat. And this is less than equal to T alpha by 2. Nothing I have done, I have just replaced T is equal to this value. This is now replacing this T with this one. This is now totally mathematical steps that we will be taking. We have ta uh, taken start and we will be able to make the final shape of the confidence interval. So now I want to get rid of this denominator so that I could make in a proper way the, th this is also the confidence interval, but at the end we want some a 
appropriate form as we did that uh, mu plus minus one, sig uh, 1 sigma, 2 sigma or 3 sigma. So what this, I multiplied both uh, this, this area, uh, this side by s standard error of beta 2 hat. So if I multiply this, this one, this will become minus T alpha by 2 divided by standard error of beta 2 hat. It is multiplied by this less than equal to beta 2 hat minus beta. Ye jo hai wo multiply hoga to ye jo hai wo isme se khatam ho jayega. Less than equal to T alpha by 2 into now this you should understand rather than bracket I will be using this dot this means multiplication so this is standard error of beta 2 hat and it will remain equal to 1 minus alpha it will remain always one equal to 1 minus alpha because we are just making the now at this side we are making just the mathematical tricks that are not difficult to understand it means we are just playing with the inequalities and I think you have the background knowledge how we uh, deal with this kind of situation now I want to construct the confidence uh, uh, interval about the parameter the true value here this is the estimator we have estimated and this is the parameter so I want to get rid of this so I uh, subtract beta 2 hat in the, from this side uh, from all these terms so this will become probability I will subtract this will become minus beta 2 hat minus T alpha by 2 into standard error of beta 2 hat less than equal to now I when I will subtract minus 2 from here this will vanish and I will be left with only beta that is the true parameter and here what will happen minus beta 2 hat we have to subtract it also from here into T into T alpha by 2 into standard error of beta 2 hat and it is equal to 1 minus alpha so I was talking about this that we just got rid of this minus beta 2 hat and this will be here will be plus as you know we will be ju just subtracting minus beta 2 here and it will add it with this term and it will be equal to 1 minus alpha. Now I am interested to make the confidence interval about beta rather than minus beta. So I will multiply the whole this left side by minus 1 so that I this uh, this term becomes plus. So when I will multiply you will be writing this multiplying the uh, whole all these terms by minus 1. So what will be this? the probability will become minus by multiplied by minus it will become beta 2 hat minus uh, div uh, multiplied by minus plus t alpha by 2 and multiplied by standard error of beta 2 hat and this will become greater than equal to now the inequality will reverse I will be just showing let me write first this I will be showing then when we multiply by a number then what happens to the inequality it will become uh, greater than equal to beta and greater than equal to this will become positive beta 2 hat and this is minus T alpha by 2 into standard error of beta 2 hat equal to 1 minus alpha so how why I reverse this inequality look at here if 3 is less than 4 and 4 is less than 5 what this mean I multiply all the numbers with minus 1 this will become minus 3 minus 4 and this will become minus 5 so what this will be now I cannot say that 
I cannot say that this is less than minus 4 and I can't say that this is less than minus 5. Minus 4 is not less than minus 5, it is greater than. So what will be now the inequality will reverse and it will become minus 3 will be now greater than minus 4 and now it will become greater than minus 5. So when we multiply the inequality then the situation reverses. So what will be now just I would like to write this, this term on that side and this term on that side again reversing the inequality. I will also tell you that how I have reverses this probability. Now I am writing this here first this portion here. So this is beta 2 hat minus t alpha by 2 into standard error of beta 2 hat. Now it reverses less than equal to true beta less than equal to now I will write this term. This is beta 2 hat plus t alpha by 2 into standard error of beta 2 hat and this all is equal to 1 minus alpha. So this is the final shape of our confidence interval that we have made around the beta 2 hat, uh, beta 2 that is the true parameter. So th this is the range and what we say now before going uh, further let me say why, why I reversed it look at this if 3 is less than 4 less than 5 if I want to bring 5 here it will become reverse 5 is greater than 4 it is greater than 3. So what I did just I took this value here and the whole inequality was reversed. So what is this confidence interval how we will interpret it and how we will explain it. Now what I am saying that I am 95 percent confident that this con uh, confidence interval will include the true value of the parameters. What this means that we are 95 percent confident the, uh, that the true value will include in this uh, that our uh, confidence interval will include the values of the parameter. So this was uh, the mechanism of this I will be taking some example and then I will be explaining that how we measure this kind of things because we will be taking the values of beta 2 at and we will be getting value of alpha by 2 and standard error. If you look at the example here we, these are the supposed value you will come when you will run the your uh, analysis you will come with the estimated value that is here if you look at here this is the beta 2 hat and this is the standard error we need if you go to the previous what we need we need this beta 2 hat we now found this I would like to write it here again so that we could find the value. So this is the probability of beta 2 hat the confidence interval is beta 2 hat plus t alpha by 2 into standard error of beta 2 hat less than equal to beta less than equal to beta 2 hat this is the minus here this is the minus and this is the plus because this is the lower bound it should be minus beta 2 plus t alpha by 2 into standard error of beta 2 hat and it is equal to our 95 percent confidence and we suppose that alpha is equal to 5 percent or it is equal to 0 0.05. The other things we have supposed now beta 2 is equal to 0 0.05. Beta 2 I will do it here so assume alpha is equal to this for 8 degrees of freedom the critical values of we if you look at here we have this value, we have this way, uh, we have value of standard error but we are, we have no value of this T alpha by 2. So what this means it is related to the degree of freedom because as the degree of freedom changes 
then the value of this t stats also changes. We assume that the degree of freedom is at 8 and the critical value at this is here 2.306. So t alpha by 2 is equal to 2.306. If you make to this, I would like to draw it. That's now t is equal to 2.306 and here t is that is 2.5 percent this is also 2.5 percent and 2.306 this is now minus and this is now plus so what this is how we have taken this confidence interval now you have to calculate the things I will not calculate I will just write it and you will be calculating it look at the previous one this is the probability and look at this here beta 2 you will be writing 0 0.5091 this is the beta 2 hat minus t alpha by 2 you have the value of this 2.306 into multiplied by standard error of beta 2 hat it is equal to 0 0.0357 and it is less than equal to beta it is less than equal to again this is beta 2 hat 0 0.5091 minus uh, now plus the this is the value of a t that is equal to here 2.36 2.306 multiplied standard error that is 0 0.035 7. So if you and the bracket is, if you make you will come such kind of interval and you will be writing it 0 if you solve this I am sure it will equal to this one it should be equal to this one 0 0.4268 less than equal to beta 2 less than equal to 0 0.5914. So now if you draw I, I could draw at this line so now this is your limit for beta 2 and the limit lower limit is 0 0.4268 and the upper limit is 0 0.5914 so this is the example numerical example that if you are given some specific values how you construct the confidence interval because hypothesis is totally depending on how you make the confidence interval when it will be falling in this we will be doing something and when it is out of these values we will also calling that what is this situation is there properties of t distribution in this our discussion most of the time we will be talking about the t distribution so I would like to give you a sum of the properties every distribution have its properties and I would like to give you some of the properties here the area, the first is the first property is the t distribution is different for different values of n the sample size so as the sample size changes the values of t also changes it is happening in all the other distribution also it has not something special for this the second uh, property of the normal distrib uh, the t distribution the area under the curve is 1 I have explained it there I would like to do it again here look at this this is the t distribution this is the this is the two and we say that this is the whole area under the curve is one and this is its center that its mean and on this right side this is area, area is equal to one by two and this is area is also equal to 1 by 2 because of the symmetry why it is on half one side and the, on the other side it is due to its symmetrical nature that it is normally distributed the area under the curve to the right of 0 so this is the 0 and to the left of this it is 1 by 2 you can write also here yes, this is 1 by 2 and this is also 1 by 2 so to the left of 0 the area under the curve is 1 by 2 half 50 percent and to the right it is also the 50 percent 
The third is very interesting. As T increases without bound, as T's value increases, you will see the T value will keep from here to T values will keep on increasing. As T increases without bound, the graph approaches but never equals zero. It will go very, very near towards, I can say that this can, but it will never approach to zero. As T decreases without uh, bound at the same time, it also try to reach the zero here. Without bound, the graph approaches but never equal to zero. On both extreme, it as the t will increase, it will try to touch the zero level, but it will never uh, become zero. The fourth property uh, property of t distribution is that the area in tails of the t distribution. This is different from the standard normal distribution that the area in the tails of t distribution is little greater than the area in the tails of the standard normal distribution. So what we are saying, we are just supposing, supposing that this is the t distribution and we say the area here is greater as compared to the standard normal distribution that was the z distribution at this stage, at the previous stage. And why, why this is happening? This result is because we use S. S is the now sample, it is notation for the sample uh, residual uh, standard deviation. And we use it as instead of the sigma, that is the variance of the residual in population, that is the unknown. And which introduces more variability to the T statistics. So this introduces more variability. That's why this distribution uh, uh, takes under its uh, extremes, you can say at, under its steel, a bit greater uh, area as compared to the standard normal distribution. The fifth is as the sample n increases. Now you will see that as the sample increases, it there are many of the problems and many of the differences coincide and the many of the things becomes one thing. So what is this? As the sample n increases, the density curve of t gets closer to the standard normal density. Waha jo fark tha ke t distribution ki tail mein thoda sa area zyada hota hai as compared to the standard normal distribution. So this difference start vanishing as what we do, as we do that uh, as the number of n, that is the number of observation uh, at is increased to infinity, for example, the density curve, t ke curve ke shape or standard normal curve ke shape, ye jo hai, wo ek dousre se similar or ek dousre se coincide jo hai, wo karne ki jo hai, wo ek dousre se coincide jo jati hai. Why? Because in the large sample, s, jo ke humne रिप्रेजेंटेटिव के तौर पर लिया था इस सिग्मा के क्योंकि हम सिग्मा डायरेक्टली जो है वो इसको जो है वो मैयर नहीं कर सकते इन लार्ज सैंपल एज आवर सैंपल विल बिकम लार्जर एंड लार्जर एस विल कन्वर्ज टू सिग्मा सो द डिफरेंट बिटवीन एस एंड सिग्मा विल बिकम मिनिमम और यही फर्क था पीछे इसकी जो है वो पीछे वाली डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन में सो इट विल इंक्रज एंड इट विल गो इन टू द बाई वैल्यूज ऑफ बाई by the law of large number. I suppose do you are uh, aware of, of the large number, uh, law of large number. For example, what the large, uh, law of large number says that if you uh, flip a, a, coin, a coin infinite time, so what will be the, the tail share will be 1 by 2 and the head will be 1 by 2. For example, if you say 1 million time you flip a coin, there will be 1 by 2 million tails. If you keep on uh, counting that how many times it appeared tail and what is 1 by 2, uh, there, there, there will appear the heads. So what is the large number in the, when the sample goes to infinite uh, situation, then you can say that the, it becomes, uh, as I suppose there, that the probabilities or you can say the events 
occur according to their probabilities. So this was the law of large number. So these were the properties of the T distribution. I would like to give just one uh, distribution here, explanation here, because here if you see that what is all the other properties are almost similar with the standard normal distribution, but one is the difference. What is the difference? That the area under the tails of the T distribution is bit greater as compared to the standard normal distribution. Vaja uski humne ye batai ke jo sigma hai, jo ke population parameter hai, that is directly, we can't estimate, that is unknown. And for that reason, we represent it by S, that is you can say in our previous example, this was this. Here I have just mentioned it by S. What is this? We represented our sigma by S. So now this S is a, 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 is a representative of sigma. So due to this, there is a variability in the T distribution. But as the T as the sample size is, if you see here, as the n number of observation goes to infinity, then this situation is the difference between s, that is the sample uh, estimates, and the sigma, that is the population parameter, this becomes minimum and it converges towards zero. And as it converges towards zero, the difference between the t distribution and the standard normal distribution becomes very, very small. And if it goes to infinite, the, it coincides with the, both the distribution here. So I think this is time to wind up this lecture. Here in this lecture, we remain more mechanical. And I would like to give summary of this lecture. And now, what is this point and interval estimation? We started our lecture by point and interval estimation. Point est uh, uh, estimation gives us only one value that our uh, estimates can assume. But when uh, in this case, we are not confident about much that it will it will be very true, uh, very near to the true parameter. So what we say, we want to make a range of this that is called the interval estimation. So when we are talking about the interval estimation, we are, have to construct the confidence interval. So what is the confidence interval? I would like to repeat that how we state this confidence interval. If you remember, we use two words, the alpha, that is, that was the level of significance. And as a result of alpha, one minus alpha was the confidence level. Alpha is, uh, the selection of alpha is totally arbitrary on the uh, discretion of the uh, researcher. You can set any value of the alpha, but I, as I told you, there are some standard norms and we take the value of alpha equal to 1%, 5%, and 10%. However, if you take alpha is equal to 20%, you can take this, but you will have to justify that what is the reason behind this. So talking about the confident interval, it has two limits. It is about the, it is on both sides of the true parameter. And here in our uh, uh, estimation, or you can say the mathematical mechanism, we constructed the confidence interval about the true parameter that was the beta 2 hat. The similar will be in case of beta 1 hat. There will be no difference, but there will be difference in the next lecture. I will be showing you that when we will be making the confidence interval about the variance, we will be making, making use of the chi-square distribution rather than the t-square distribution. So the lower, there are limits of the uh, confidence interval. The lower limit is called the lower confidence limit and the higher limit is called the higher uh, confidence limit. So what, how to est uh, explain this? We say that we are 95, if your confidence, the probability you have set alpha is equal to 5, 1 minus alpha, that is the confidence level, it is now 1 minus alpha. So it is 95%. So what we can say, we say that we are 95% confident that our constructed confidence interval will include the true value of the parameter. So 95% uh, probability is enough. And if it includes that, we will say it later the reject uh, uh, null hypothesis 
or select a hypothesis. I am not go, oh, uh, going to open this discussion right here. In the next lecture, we will continue this situation. Area under the normal curve, this is very interesting. Area, the total area under the normal curve is 100% or you can say 1. If you say you do not go for the percentage, you can say the 1. So it divides, uh, because it is symmetrical in nature, so it divides the area into two equal parts. One to the right of the 0 and one to uh, half to the left of the 0. So we can say to the right of the uh, 0, there is 1 by 2 area, or if I speak in the percentage term, I will see that it is 50% area. And to the left of the term, it is 1 by 2. If I speak that the total area under the curve is 1, and if I speak in the percentage, I will see say that it is the 50% area under the curve. So I was talking about the area under the car, uh, normal curve. So the area under the normal curve is that mu plus the one standard error, it covers the 68% area under the normal curve. And if we take the mu plus two standard error, it uh, takes 95% area under the curve. And if we add make uh, the confidence interval of uh, the mean plus three, standard error, it covers the area below the normal curve that is equal to 99% and 99.7%. So at the last we just discussed the T distribution. The T distribution, why we just, we will be not knowing about the properties of the chi-square distribution because most of the time we will be confining ourselves uh, to the T square, uh, T distribution and we say that our parameters, uh, uh, the significance can be tested through the T distribution because they follow the T distribution. What was the, the uh, while discussing its property, there was one difference and the difference between the standard normal distribution and the T distribution was that, that the T distribution has a bit greater area under its tail as compared to the standard normal distribution. And immediate reason was that, that we can't find the sigma that is the population parameter, population variance of the error. We can't uh, find it directly. We estimate it by sigma hat or you can say the S. So there is some difference and it brings variability to the T distribution. So when it brings t, uh, variability to the T distribution, there is a difference between the standard normal distribution and the T distribution and this uh, difference vanishes as the n goes to the infinities according to the uh, law of large number because as the n goes uh, towards the infinity the difference between the sample estimate that was the s and the parameter uh, uh, of population that was the sigma becomes minimum and it vanishes so the t distribution and the standard normal distribution becomes the similar and ident identical. So this was the discussion for today from me. Thank you very much and Allah Hafiz.